Hello, my name is Lars, and because I've been trying to answer a lot of questions on Twitter about how to use OBS for Let's Plays and how we set up our streaming overlays, I thought I'd make a video to show you all how we do it here at Lowbrow Gaming. This is a two-part tutorial, and in this first video, we're going to go through what equipment we use, which audio and video settings, very important. We'll breeze by the advanced settings, hotkeys, uh, the OBS mixer, which is the most important thing, and finally go through how to set up the scenes and layers for your Let's Plays. In the second part, we'll go through streaming settings, but before you rush over there, make sure you have an overview of the basic settings covered in this video. But if you think we're all good, go ahead and click the info card in the top right corner now. Okay, so if you're still here, let me remind you that I'm no expert. This is just what we at Lobra Gaming have found works for us. So, what equipment do we use? I'm currently sitting in front of a Audio-Technica 2020, the not USB version. This is connected to a USB sound card. It's a bit of, it's a bit outdated, but it does the trick. It's the DigiDesign Mbox 2 Mini. The next important bit is that we have headphones with uh, split outputs, which means that I can go into the playback devices and I can choose different outputs for uh, general sound, like all the all the game sound and all of the desktop sound that the computer will make will come through here. But I have set the earphone on my headphones to be the default communications device. Uh, I personally am using the Astro A50, which has a lousy microphone but brilliant sound. And Magnus and Christian, who are the other two content creators on this channel, they use the Turtle Beach something or other that I can't remember right now. Anyway, this means that when we record multiplayer, we have different outputs. See, we do voice chat on the headset earphone as the communications device. This means that we can split game audio and our voice chat audio onto different tracks and I use my uh, recording microphone instead of the headset microphone in Discord. Uh, if you're using TeamSpeak or Skype or whatever, you can do the exact same thing. If you don't have a headset with the ability to split your audio outputs, you can achieve the same result with a virtual audio cable. That's a third-party software that splits your audio into... Well, actually, it, it just... It pretends to create another output, and then you choose that output in Discord uh, and in OBS. And let's move on to exactly that. Um, I have now reset all of my settings pretty much um, down, to, uh, down to what I need to actually record this video. Uh, so let's just go into the settings and then let's start with audio since we were talking about that. Okay, up top we have sample rate. The default is 44.1. I recommend you change this to 48 because every editing software that you're gonna use is gonna have 48 kilohertz as its default. And what's going to happen if you record in 44.1 and then you edit in 48 kilohertz is that you're going to have audio displacement. It's not going to be noticeable at first, but in about five, six minutes, it's going to be several frames off and it's going to be noticeable, especially if you have, uh, uh, you know, action games or you have a webcam and you're self-talking, you're going to see that the lips are not in sync. Okay, stereo, that explains itself, but if, you are, if you're not aware of what is mono and stereo, mono means that you get the same audio in left and right speakers, stereo means that you get left and right channels in left and right speakers. And desktop audio device. Here is the standard desktop audio device. This is my main output, and this is going to be important because we're going to separate all of these in different tracks, and this is also why we have separated the communications device. We can have multiplayer voice chat on a separate track so that when you edit, you can choose to, uh, you know, decrease decrease and increase the audio. You can uh, delete it or you can edit it much more easily. And here is my microphone. Of course, I have loads of inputs. Uh, you know, Rocksmith pops up because I, I like to play Rocksmith now and then. And that is it for the initial audio devices. Uh, remember these three. I think it, as a general rule, you should record in the resolution that you uh, that the actual game is in. So if you have a game that you that can only do 720p, you can change this to uh, 1280 times 720. When it comes to frame rates, it is generally expected of Let's Plays now to have uh, 60 frames per second and uh, 1080p. But in terms of recording, if the game can't do 60 FPS, there's no reason to record in 60 FPS. So uh, if you lower it to 30 and you lower this to 720p, naturally you're going to get smaller file sizes and your uh, and your hard drive is going to be happier. Moving on, 
output. Let's go check our audio. The default audio bitrate is at 160 and 192 is default for standard MP3s if you want to compare compressions and so on. And 320 is like high quality MP3. I do the middle ground, go for 256. You can rename your audio tracks and the upside to this is that your video files will retain these names for the tracks so that if you open it in VLC or you open it in uh, an editing software, you, these names are gonna pop up. I'll do game, mic, voice, chat, and I'll call this one stream. I'm gonna set that to 256 as well. There we go. That is audio settings. Let's move on to recording. Okay, type standard. Recording path, that's where all your captures and uh, game footage and so on is gonna land. Uh, you do, in general, on computers, want to generate file names without spaces, but, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a necessity. Recording format, I do believe, can't remember quite right now, but I do think that the standard is FLV. You do not want it to be FLV. FLV is flash video, and you can see here as a warning, certain formats such as FLV does not support multiple tracks per recording. And that basically means that you might screw yourself over. Use MP4, just make, make it simple. Use MP4 or MOV if you are inclined to use uh, QuickTime based uh, formats, maybe you're on a Mac, then maybe MOV is, is the way to go. Here is the amount of audio tracks uh, that you want to include in your finished file. Since we don't need more than four currently at, at our channel, we only have the first four. And for us, that is, the, uh, that is the game audio, it's the microphone, it is the voice chat, and here is the stream. If I were to use an Elgato, I would probably pick this one for streams, but I don't generally use the Elgato that much, but I leave it checked all nonetheless so that I know that the fourth track is always enabled no matter what. Okay, encoder. Encoders are perhaps the most important thing on this page. Um, there's a huge difference between the choices. I mean, I can't show you right here, but you'll see, uh, most likely you'll see the X264 and hopefully you'll see the H264. And there's a huge difference between those. Because I have NVIDIA graphics cards, the NVENC encoder is included, and I hope that your graphics card also includes an equivalent. So what is the difference between the two? The X264 encoder is a software decoder, meaning that the CPU regenerates or re-renders every single frame from, from your game after the GPU has already made it. So naturally the um, the X264 encoder is heavier on the CPU. On the other hand, with the uh, with the X264, you can have a lower bitrate, and I'm going to come back to that later. The hardware encoder H264 is much lighter on the CPU because it actually just saves every frame directly from your graphics card. It uses just the GPU's uh, rendering and uh, just you know rapidly saves every frame. Uh, rescale output, we would, don't want to do that, why would you? Mux the settings, I don't yet know what that even is. Uh, profile, main. Okay, so what are keyframe intervals? If you've seen some poorly encoded video, like uh, if you have uh, downloaded a v very compressed video file, you will have seen the effect of a long keyframe interval. Like uh, the, the camera will change from one face to the other but then the color information would not have updated, so the previous image lingers on the other person's face. That is a long keyframe interval. The color information in the image has not updated. So that's what this means. Obviously, it means seconds. So every two seconds, the color information would be uh, updated. I, I, initially th I initially thought that this was two frames, um, but, you know, whatever works, as long as it's not zero. Rate control, constant bitrate, very important to maintain a fixed quality. Variable bitrate will just fluctuate up and down and constant quality, I don't even. So constant bitrate, once again, I'll have to just remind you that these are values and settings that we have just figured out by trial and error. Um, okay, so back to the codec. If you're using the X264, uh, you do not need a bitrate this high. You might actually just do this. Okay, um, we, for a while, we set this to 50,000, which uh, is, well, <laughs> basically it's twice, uh, twice the quality uh, required to broadcast on television. Um, generally at 25, we set it to 30, which means high quality, but we don't overdo anything. 
Uh, you want to check this advanced box so that you get the low latency, um, which disables free frame reordering. Um, just that, really. And what these mean, don't know, never touched them. Streaming we're going to cover in our next video, so let's move on to our advanced settings. Um, access priority, pff, don't really know. Uh, the renderer we've set to Direct3D because that's generally the uh, graphics driver that drives everything that we do on screen. Uh, never touched it, never touched it, never touched it. Here you can change how your file names are going to be formatted, and there are probably loads of rules for how. Uh, let's see, I'm guessing that's, uh, yeah, century, year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. Um, follows the computer's clock. And that's pretty much it for this page. Uh, there's options for streaming delays and stuff like that, but if you don't need it, you don't need it. Final thing I'm going to cover before we move on is the hotkeys. Self-explanatory, you can set up hotkeys for pretty much anything. I have Alt 6 for start recording and Alt 7 for stop recording. Some people have it to uh, an F10 or 11 button. Uh, you do as you please, brother. On the general tab, I have never touched anything and stream we will cover in the next video. Okay, now the absolutely most important thing to never ever 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 forget is to click this thing right here. Uh, this is underexplained because here is what each individual track will contain. Okay, so if by default it looks like this, which means that all of the audio that we have so delicately split into different outputs will be included on every track. So track one will include all three, track two will include all three. We have lost so many recordings because of this, okay? Uh, every time OBS crashes, every time you reinstall or update, you must check this because at random, suddenly it's back to this and you don't want that. Let's just uh, uncheck everything so that it's easier for you to see. So, uh, I, for my three Let's Play channels, I want my main audio, game audio, I want the mic audio to be number two, and I want my voice chat to be number three. Let's move on to how we set up scenes and layers. You create a new scene by clicking the plus button, you get the option of renaming it, so let's call that Game Cap, Game Capture. And um, yeah, it's black, so you need to add sources that you want to include in your video. And you can see a lot of different stuff that you can add in here. You can add a scene within a scene and so on. You can add text, images and whatnot. What we're looking for is the game capture. And let's just call that game capture. I would like to remove spaces where I can and make the source visible. And here we go. You can uh, use this to capture any full screen application. You can capture a specific window and so on. Uh, but we want specific window and then you need to have your game running to find this executable in the list. But when you do, you just click it and then it pops up and uh, you will not try to scale it or whatever. You can choose to hide the cursor or not. Generally in most games, uh, it should be on. Okay, so normally the game will just fill the entire screen automatically because we've set the settings to be uh, we go, we've set it to be 1080, we set the video to be 1080, and thus anything that is 1080 will automatically fill the entire frame. Uh, if you want to have a webcam running, you choose video capture device, and then you just add video capture device and make the source visible, and that's my face. I'm a bit ill and my nose is a bit runny and there's a lot of clutter in the background, but never you mind. Um, I use the Logitech HD Pro web Webcam C920 because that's what we read was best at the time we bought it. Um, if you want to use game capture with the Elgato, the video capture device is also what you're looking for. Let's stick to the webcam for now. Configure video will open your webcam controls and yeah, we don't need to go through that because you'll fiddle about with that on your own. However, uh, what you do want to do is you do want to customize. I prefer to use uh, 720p for the webcam because it's not going to be full HD anyway. It's going to be scaled down, so why have it at full scale? 
Also, I never ever see the reason why you would want 60 frames per second on the face cam because it doesn't really matter. The game is what matters. So I set that to 30 frames. It's going to be easier on the CPU, CPU, on the GPU and what have you. So let's just click OK. We're going to move that up in the corner. You can scale it down by clicking the circles and stuff. There we go. Uh, naturally, you would want to uh, customize with some beautiful frames and whatnot, and I'm going to cover that in the streaming video. And here I am cutting in from the future because there's something I forgot to mention, and uh, that is that this is not how we do it on our channel, believe it or not. Uh, we run two instances of OBS. One runs the game capture only. And let me just start the second instance. Okay, so resize this as well. Here we are. One instance will run the game capture only, and the other one will run the face cam. Add video capture device, cam, and here we are again. We want to customize it, set it to 1280 times 720. And let me just explain why we choose 30 instead of these other frame rates. It's because 60 can be divided by 30, uh, and it adds up. That is to say that for every Every two frames of 60, there's one frame of 30, and uh, there's no uh, chance of anything messing up. Okay, now you can see it doesn't really fill the entire frame, and that is because we have to do one thing more. We have to go into video, and we have to change to 1280 x 720. And same goes for the output resolution. Because if we leave it like this, it means that uh, it takes in the webcam and the canvas is a 720, but the file is upscaled to 1080. But we don't need that because the goal here is to have smaller file sizes and we don't really lose any quality. We'll set it to 30 frames per second, which means you'll also have half the file size. And there we go. Now it fills the entire frame and excuse the mess. I should be in that bed and not sit here because I'm still quite ill. All right, so what we do is that you uh, click record on the face cam, you click recording on record on the game, and to synchronize the two, or to make it easier for you to synchronize the two while you're editing, uh, the good idea is to, in the game, go up, down, up, down on your uh, menu while saying up, down, up, down on your face cam so that when you synchronize the movement to the word spoken, regardless of the sound and so on, it will make it easier for you to synchronize. Okay, and now one more important thing, uh, just to emphasize again, go to the mixer, and hey, look at that. Now the cam has added all of these tracks, me meaning that it's gonna, if the webcam records audio, it's gonna mess up every single track. So let's just remove all of these. Definitely the main reason to hate OBS is, is this. Uh, but if you can just remember it, to check it always, you're good to go. Back to, uh, back to the original presentation. Okay, um, I'm going to do one basic thing though. I'm going to show you that on the... Uh, there we go. You can right click and click filters, and then you can add effect filters and whatnot. But what we actually need to do sometimes is... Here we go. Uh, you, you can do cropping here. So if you do crop and pad, you can uh, crop the left side. Let's say... 600 frames, that's about half, isn't it? There you go. So now you've got a nice little square there. And that's just because I'm at the right side of the frame. The frame actually goes over here. But now you can move that everywhere and the clutter has magically disappeared. How about that? Uh, you can make things invisible just by clicking this button and of course you can set up hotkeys to do the same thing. You can set up hotkeys to mute uh, mute audio channels and stuff as well and the filters and properties are also found on the mixer. Okay, now sometimes uh, you don't have full screen games. What do you do, what do, you do then? Well, you, do, you use the disc display capture that we've been using all the way. You find it right here, display capture. And the display capture has uh, the option of choosing which monitor you're using. And that's it, whether or not to capture cursor. Now the danger of using the display capture is of course that your Steam uh, pop-ups and uh, notifications and stuff like that, friends logging on and off, are going to pop up. Um, the same applies for any sort of notification that is outside of the game that your screen will capture. Because the display capture just captures anything on screen. The game capture captures the game only. 
as the great advantage, but if it doesn't work, use display capture. Okay, moving on, if you have the Elgato game capture as mentioned, Elgato, uh, we will add the video capture device, we will call it Elgato, uh, we can't do that because the scene is already named Elgato, so let's call it Elgato Cap. Uh, we will choose the Elgato Game Capture HD. We do want to customize. We set the resolution to 1080. We set it to 60 frames because most of the time that's what we want of our game footage. And we generally don't touch anything else. And that's it. But keep in mind, keep in mind the mixer because the mixer will screw you over. See that? Default. Everything is checked, which means that when you add a new thing that creates sound, you will have that sound on every single track, which will mess up everything that we've planned for. Right? So we uncheck it from anything that we don't want it to appear in, and we have the Elgato on track four. Remember, we have enabled, uh, we have enabled all these four tracks to have recordings on them. So we have main audio, we have the microphone, we have the voice chat, and we have the Elgato game capture. What I neglected to mention when we were last in the mixer is this thing, down mix to mono. Because uh, the microphone is mono, and in a stereo track, the microphone will uh, end up on just one of the channels. Meaning that when you import your uh, footage into your favorite editing software, the microphone might end up on uh, just the left side of your headset, or in your left speaker. And, uh, well, this is the quick fix. I mean, there's naturally ways to fix that in the editing software as well. It, nothing is ever ruined, but if you could fix it beforehand, why not? And that is how we at Lowbrow Gaming set up OBS for Let's Plays. The next video will be about streaming, and I'm going to go way in depth uh, in terms of layers and overlays and stuff like that, because I have to set up for my stream tomorrow. See you later.